Cardiogenic shock is a deadly clinical syndrome characterized by low cardiac output resulting in poor end organ perfusion. This is a serious complication of many cardiac conditions such as acute myocardial infarction, decompensated heart failure, and myocarditis. Of all acute myocardial infarctions presenting to the hospital, about 5-10% to will develop cardiogenic shock. Despite advancement in coronary stenting technology over the past few decades, the mortality rate for cardiogenic shock has remained a dismal 40-50%. to A multidisciplinary approach towards the management of cardiogenic shock, employing early invasive hemodynamic monitoring and early mechanical circulatory support, can potentially improve outcomes for this deadly condition. We used to diagnose and react to cardiogenic shock only when the patient presents with hypotension. However, we now know that this might be too late as the patient might have already gone beyond the point of salvage. We now try to use multiple data points to predict patients who are at risk of developing full-blown cardiogenic shock. We can then institute early treatment to prevent the inevitable downward spiral of this condition. So there are actually many ways to administer treatment for patients in cardiogenic shock. However, for today, we'll be focusing mainly on patients who require mechanical circulatory support. In patients with acute cardiogenic shock, we do consider the use of early implantation of MCS devices such as a C-Vent. We first need to secure vascular access via the right or left common femoral arteries, and this often requires the insertion of either an 8 French sheath going all the way up to that of a 14 French sheath. With the use of a guide wire, these MCS devices are then inserted through the sheath and positioned appropriately across the heart. It is important that the use of MCS devices must be tailored and individualized according to the patient's characteristics. So this includes the cause of cardiogenic shock, the shock profile, and the degree of hemodynamic compromise. Successful recognition of cardiogenic shock and percutaneous treatment in the cath lab is only the start of cardiogenic shock treatment. Real-world studies have shown that a protocolized bundle of care approach in the management of these patients will improve the clinical outcomes of these critically ill cardiac patients. After the patient is transferred to the coronary care unit, he or she will be managed by a multidisciplinary team the clinical team will assess the data that's presented to us in the form of hemodynamic parameters, urine output, lab data to determine the progress of the patient. If we deem the patient to be improving, we can then assess for the ability to de-escalate therapy. However, if the patient is not improving, we will rapidly come together to make a decision on whether or not we should be escalating therapy, such as extracorporeal membrane oxygenation or ECMO. With the varied presentation of cardiogenic shock and the array of tools available to us in this day and age, management of the patient needs to be highly individualized in order to match the specific patient phenotype and to achieve the best outcomes possible for the patient. So at NUHCS, we believe that a multidisciplinary approach towards management of cardiogenic shock employing early invasive hemodynamic monitoring and early mechanical circulatory support can potentially improve the outcomes for these critically ill patients.